there, Sagittarius. Welcome to your mid-April 2024 general tarot update. It's Raina here, and just full disclosure, I laid down a few cards, and they're all reversed, and I do read reversed cards, but if they're, then I looked at the bottom of the deck, it was upside down. So that was user error, so I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing it over again because, um, they would all have probably been reversed or most of them. And because I do read them, I just don't feel that that is how that I, you know, that that was really intended. I'm sure my partner would say, well, that was how it was meant to be because, you know, that's how he's like, but I'm a little bit different. And I'm also going to be picking a sacred geometry activation Oracle card. <laughs> uh Oh, <laughs> Well, we'll see what happens here. Okay, good. Phew. And it's funny, I ended up getting judgment, the judgment card anyway in the challenge position. So it worked out. I guess the universe wanted us to get that card because I'm a Sanch too. For those who don't know it. Wow. Okay. Well, first of all, since I'm getting the death card as the uh, final card, that, that does speak about transformation. And we are having a full moon in Sagittarius about five weeks from now. So that, that theme of endings and um, epiphanies about the temporal nature of life will I'm sure come about, you know. So anyway, um, the heart of the matter is the Ace of Wands reversed. I'm going to um, hold it upright. And this is a card of new beginnings. So something feels like stuck and blocked when it comes to new beginnings. Actually, as I record this in mid-April, there is uh, the Mercury retrograde in play in the sign of Aries, which is one of the fire signs and the wands are connected to fire. And I actually connect aces to Aries because it's the first sign and it's about new beginnings. So, um, you know, something that during that, uh, Aries solar eclipse that maybe you were hoping for is it might be taking longer to get activated. Understand that Mercury goes direct April 25th and it will be until almost like the middle, like about a month from now, when Mercury comes out of its shadow. So any kind of project, or if you're starting a business, give it time to gel, because it may be more um, likely to pick up steam in several weeks. And so don't, in other words, don't be discouraged. Um, in the past position, you have the hangman, which can feel like you're in this state of suspension. And that's kind of the same vibe of like, okay, when is everything going to start rocking and rolling? And, you know, fire is very progressive, uh, meaning that it wants things to kind of happen and it's looking to the future. So when things are kind of stagnant or they don't seem to be moving very quickly, we can become impatient and we have to be able to um, allow things to, ha you know, move in their own time. And also this can relate to relation. Well, I shouldn't say relationships, but especially new love because that, that solar eclipse hit the fifth house that can be about love. And maybe there have been, with Mercury retrograding in that house as well, maybe there have been things that feel like it, it. And I, the way that I experience this myself is feeling like everything was starting to kind of go. And then it seems like it's slowing down. And that, that is, is sometimes part of life. And we do have to uh, be able to, see that for what it is and not like just give up on it 
if we really feel that this is where we need to be and including a person that you may have recently started dating and then something has come between the two of you being able to do this and you're like, why should I even bother? You know, but it might be the very uh, relationship that you cultivate through this situation that is your life partner. You never know, but you have to uh, have the faith. And actually, this is the higher message card. The, the higher fant is about God. It's also about I would say, um, when I, when I think of God, I think about everything being in divine order. Um, this is a card of Taurus and it's interesting that there's a lightning strike because, um, Jupiter is going to align with Uranus, the, the ruler of Aquarius. And it, it actually, it's already probably in conjunction, but it will be in that exact conjunction on April 20th. And for Sages, this will tend to fall in your uh, sixth house of work, service to others. So if there's some kind of like, if you are, uh, you know, maybe for some people will be in the fifth house, which would be the area that we're talking about. Um, but regardless, either the business that you own or some type of work that you're looking to do, you may find that you have some kind of like uh, unexpected surprise. That's very, and I would say will tend to be a very happy surprise occur that you can um, celebrate this occurrence that you feel. And so with the, the higher fan that might be talking about that period of time. So that might be when things, cause that'll be after Mer uh, Mercury goes direct too. Oh no, I, I take that back. It's going to be um, the week that Mercury goes direct, but not, it, it won't have gone direct, direct uh, on that date. Um, what crosses you is a judgment card. Again, I think that these are all related um, where you may be misperceiving something. You may be assuming that if something isn't happening fast enough that it's not going to happen, don't make that mistake and don't um, think that something isn't meant to be because it just didn't drop in your lap. It's, it might be, you know, we're, we're in this eclipse cycle and things are a little bit um, tenuous and easy to shake up. So, you know, in May, May 25th to be exact, Jupiter's going into Gemini, the opposite sign of Sag into the house of relationships. So that might be, um, meeting the person that is your life partner. It could be a stroke of luck that does that. What's coming in, I'm going to hold it upright but it's reversed, the star card reversed. Um, the star card is about faith and unseen forces. So in so reversed, if we look at it from the other side of things, you may have to flip the script if you are cynical about your life currently. Um, again, because you were hoping something would happen that hasn't happened yet. You're going to have to work on that to make those that belief system um more positive and you know not needing evidence that something is on its way this the star card is connected to aquarius and aquarius rules the 11th house and one of the key phrases of the 11th house is hopes and wishes. So um, sometimes, and, and these are long range goals, sometimes goals seem out of reach, don't they? Because they're not yet materialized. And we still have to believe that they're on their way. And, and part of that belief, and this is the tricky part, is taking inspired action in that direction. It can feel delusional 
to be working on something that is taking forever to materialize. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course you have to, you have to, um, know that you have talent in a certain area and not be deluded and all that good stuff. But other than that, I think that people throw in the towel way too soon, right before they're going to succeed. And the outcome is the death card. And this to me suggests that you're going to have to let go of something in your life. Maybe in, for some Sages, this is like a major overhaul in order to bring in that new energy, which the Ace of Wands is all about. That the Ace of Wands is that fresh new energy. There may be uh, for some Sages that you have to really overhaul your life in a major way. Um, and in order to attract that kind of flow, because again, you may be, you may feel stagnant, stuck in this waiting period, and you might be waiting for something outside of yourself to happen rather than make it happen yourself. But sometimes letting go, which I think of as the death card is part of that process. It's not always about um, waiting for new things. Um, it's about, it's kind of like if you have, if you're, um, wanting a, a new wardrobe, but you only have so much space in your closet, what are you going to do? You're going to donate your clothes, or if you have ratty clothes, you'll throw them away. And then that makes space for the new to come in. On an energetic level, we can do this too. Normally, I'd say, oh my gosh, I better pick another card because I don't want to end on the death card. But I do want to end on the death card. I want Sages to embrace the, the letting go as much as we love the new fresh energy coming in. Okay, I'm going to pick, this is the back of the deck of the let's take a geometry activation. Okay. Empowerment. Okay, I'm going to hold it up and I'll just read from the card. The frequency of empowerment supports our ability to show up fully and completely, uniting us with others in the deep trust that we are all connected through the same source. Um, hmm. I'm going to, I, I've just been, you know, riffing off of that. I, I'm going to like go to the booklet because there's a reason that I'm a little bit stumped on this um, because usually empowerment to me, I think of as an individual thing. I, I don't think of it as a group effort necessarily. Okay, I'm just going to read what it says. Um, empowerment refers to the process of enabling or giving power to. And we typically associate power with strength. In the new energy, however, strength is not only not only refers to the totality of everything that makes us strong on the outside, like our physical form and shape, but includes the inner qualities of wisdom, balance, flexibility, adaptability, and courage. Our true power is deeply rooted in knowing who of who we are, our connection to source and self. When we are clear about who we are, we can be clear about what we are here to do. This clarity is empowering. In the empowerment image, we see human shapes with their arms over their heads. Um, okay, I did not see that. <laughs> I'm just going to hold this up again. If you see human beings there, that's great. But I didn't, I didn't happen to see that. I'm going to just put this right here. Um, referring to the state of completeness that every human can reach on their own. They also show the power of our connection because we're all connected to the same source. We can overcome any perceived differences and combine our power toward a more conscious reality. All the shades and gradations of blue refer to our ability to express ourselves in the world. That's because I'm assuming the, the fifth chakra, the Vishu, 
I think it's called Vishuda, Vishuti, is blue. Communication, the throat chakra. Um, blue is also considered to be the color of truth. Oh, that is wild because Sagittarius is connected to truth. The red in the center refers to our ability to ground and identify ourselves in the physical world. Red stimulates courage, strength, power, and determination. And the yellow ball emerges from the mill. It refers to the inner power that flows from our center onto the grid of the flower of life, the basis of our form-based reality. Okay. So... Um, there you have that, and that's what I have for you, Sag. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I do astrology primarily, and I have some package deals as well as individual readings for different areas of life. Please click on the link below. Thank you for watching. Bye.